Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's explore that technique called the method of undetermined coefficients. What is it? How does it work? Well, first of all, we use it to solve non-homogeneous second-order differential equations, but we use it to solve those equations when it has constant coefficients. We're going to use a different method when we don't have constant coefficients. And the solution is always going to be as follows. It's going to be the sum of the solution to the homogeneous part and the particular solution. The way we find the homogeneous portion of the solution is to set this function equal to zero, make it into a homogeneous equation, solve that, and of course by now you realize there's going to be three different solutions. We use a characteristic equation, find the roots of that equation, and depending upon whether or not b squared minus 4ac is larger, equal to or less than zero, we're going to get these three types of solutions for the homogeneous part of the equation. Then we need to find the particular solution, the solution when we don't let this equal zero. So what happens now is we're going to take a look at this function and see what it looks like. Now that function can take on many different forms, but there are three very common forms of that function. It can be an exponential function, it can be a polynomial, or it can be a trigonometric function. So let's approach first those three different kinds of very common forms of this function right here. If it's, for example, an exponential function, we know that the particular solution then is going to look like this, some constant times e to the kt. e to the kt would be the function given here, and then we need to determine the coefficient in front of that function. That's the undetermined coefficient, and so the job would then be to try and find what that value for a is. If we have a polynomial function like this, if g of t, the function over here is the polynomial function, then we know it, the solution will look something like this, and we need to determine a, b, and c, all three of these coefficients to find the particular solution. If it's a trigonometric function, let's say c times the cosine of kt, then we know that the particular solution will have this form and we'll have to find a and b, the particular, those two undetermined coefficients. How do we find those undetermined coefficients? Well, we're going to then take our particular solution in the general form with the undetermined coefficients, find the second derivative, the first derivative, and of course the particular solution, and plug those back into the original equation and set it equal to g of t. By doing that, we're going to end up with linear equations that will allow us to find the undetermined coefficients, a, b, and c, as we see in these examples right here. Now, we're going to show you plenty of examples of how to actually do that, but that's a general approach. You see what the form of the equation is here that makes it non-homogeneous. You recognize it for the particular type of function. You then set up a particular solution with undetermined coefficients. Then you find the first and second derivative of that, pluck the function, the first and second derivative back in the original equation right here, equate it to g of t, whatever that g of t is, and then you'll find the undetermined coefficient by solving those linear equations simultaneously. In the end, then, you'll end up with solutions like this. If we have this type of function, then it'll be the homogeneous part, which comes from here, plus this, and of course, by then, we would have established what a is equal to. Or if we have a polynomial type function, then the solution will be the homogeneous part coming from here, plus a t squared plus b t plus c, and of course, we have to find a, b, and c. And if it's a trigonometric function, then the final solution will be the homogeneous part plus the particular solution that will generally look like this, and we have determined to determine a and b. Of course, as I said, we'll show you examples of how to actually do that in each of these three cases, and then furthermore with all kinds of different combinations as well. So that's what we mean by the method of undetermined coefficients. We find the particular solution, we know that the general format should look like because the general format of the particular solution will look very similar to what we have over here. We just don't know the coefficients and then we have to determine them. That's the method.